I can't believe this. They've done it again. The hype is so real for the Garden of Banban Ban 4, and the Euphoric Bros have already released the Chapter 4 trailer. You won't believe the amount of secrets and details that are hiding in there. Oh, and there's a big Eroga secret you won't want to miss at the end of this video. So no more yapping about. Let's just jump straight into this thing. At detail number one, that's not Tartabur. I know, I know, I hate to be the one that burst your bubble, but that monstrosity we see at the beginning is definitely not the Tartabur. Right off the bat, the trailer starts off with this mutant, just screaming right in our face with its disgusting bird breath. And instantly, everyone believed that that was the Tartabur going through some fatherly rage. Maybe because a certain protagonist kidnapped one of his children. But upon further inspection, you can see that the details of this bird isn't very Tartar-like. Firstly, yellow beak, red beak. Secondly, purple hair, purple wings. And over here, red hair, red wings. And finally, yellow legs and red legs. Now obviously nothing is definitive because we know the Euphoric Bros like to keep us guessing. There could easily be something down there that results in the Tartar Bird going through a transformation where even the colors change. But personally, I'm getting more Kamataki and Tamataki vibes. I mean, based on the size of the bricks behind it, this thing is gonna be huge. And the inconsistent pigmentation of the skin reminds me of Kamataki and Tamataki's skin. It might just be one of the deep mutants. But better yet, it could be one of the original genome donors for the Jevanium that made the Tartar Bird. But one thing's for sure, I really hope this guy is a good guy. Uh, who knows, we might get to ride daddy again. Anyway, on to detail number two, we found the kingdom. Everyone remembers that mysterious message we got at the end of chapter three. Find the kingdom, find the sheriff, do not let the jester find you. Well, I think we definitely found the kingdom. In the first eight seconds of the trailer, you start running towards something that looks like massive gates. And on the other side, a massive lit up area. I think it's pretty clear those gates are leading towards a medieval style kingdom. Maybe even a castle that some royalty might be living in. And with my super duper powers of observation, <laughs> at the 50 second mark, we see the other side of those doors. As if we're looking back from where we just ran from. You can tell because just on the other side, you can see the light that you were running towards. And from this side, you can totally make out the shape of the doors. And as I said before, it's very lit up. What's cool is on this side, you can see that it's totally medieval. You've got those fire lights, the royalty banner with the mysterious kangaroo on it. Ooh. And most importantly, brick everywhere. Man, this place is so deep, I can't believe it. But there's also this small detail here, some spikes on the ground. You know, the type of spike traps that are used to keep people out. So for all we know, this place might be hostile. For all we know, there might be more traps around this place. But anyway, on to detail number three. Sheriff Toadster might be good. L let me explain. He's clearly seen chaperoning us through this chapter. Like I said in the first nine seconds, you can see us running towards the kingdom. And who's leading the way? The sweet, shiny cheeks of Sheriff Toadster. <laughs> and as we know, that's our mission for this chapter, to find the kingdom. So if he's leading the way, that must mean he's good, right? And then again, we see him over here. He's got that creepy smile all the time. But it seems as though he greets us early on in the chapter since we still have the baby bird with us. And the way he's walking seems harmless. Basically, all evidence we've seen of the sheriff so far is good. But let me remind you of something. He's one of the two mascots that definitely got cut off. Remember this list in Uthman's office? Him and Nab Nab took the first cut. And as we know, Nab Nab is super jaded. Kinda always on the edge of killing us. And chapter 4 is deep down in the facility. And that's the first time we see the sheriff. So there's a chance he's jaded as well. But that's not the main reason why I think he has the potential to be a bad guy. So let's go into detail number 4. Everyone is imprisoned. Something you would have noticed straight away is that there's some of the mascots that we know and love but incarcerated. They're sitting in empty rooms looking depressed as hell. Those are their prison cells. You can even see Jumbo Josh's biggest asset, his hands being locked up. They seem to be chained in these barrels so that they can't escape. And Slow Celine seems to be evicted from her shell completely. But this isn't the first time we've seen a jail like this. Remember Sheriff Toadster's minigame? Where our mission was to get 10 criminals and put them behind bars. So does that mean the big old sheriff put these guys in here as well? For some reason he may have deemed that the mascots are criminals as well. And I guess they're not necessarily good guys, we've had mixed feelings about them in the previous chapters. But seeing their sad sights makes me think that maybe the sheriff is a bit more evil than we think. This is one of those details where I hope I'm completely wrong. But anyway, on to detail number five. The mean kids bite back. Now this is a small detail, but I really liked it. Remember how we saw all of the mascots incarcerated? They were all being hit where it hurts the most. Slow Celine's shell, Jumbo Josh's fists, Stinger Flynn's tentacles, and for Ban Balina, it's a pretty unique one. Her ego. She's obsessed with being a teacher, and in her cell, her worst nightmare is coming true. She's being bullied. Remember her classroom minigame? We've seen these pins before. They're the mean kids. And in her cell, she's surrounded by a bunch of mean kids. You can see from the way that she's sitting, she looks like she's being bullied. 
Blade. Whoever put the mascots in these cells knows all of their biggest weaknesses. Even though for Bambolina they're just inanimate objects. Anyway, on to detail number six. The Jester imprisoned everyone. Now I know this is going completely against my previous theory, but as I said, there's no definitive answer to any of these things. There's only theories on what could possibly happen. So I want to make a callback to the previous trailer. When we see Stinger Flynn finally wake up from his fight, the first person he sees is the Jester, and he has a surprised look on his face. And now the next time we see Stinger Flynn, he's in a prison cell. I know I said Sheriff Toadster owns the cells, but based on this line of events, it could mean that the Jester just used the cells. Stinger Flynn has immense power, and he's huge, but it seems the Jester found him at his most vulnerable point, right after his big boss fight with Jumbo Josh. So it makes the most sense that the Jester exploited this scenario and put him in a prison cell. But there's one other thing I'd like to know. In this massive new trailer, we don't even see the Jester. So we don't have a full idea on how big he is, how strong he is, or what he actually looks like. But one thing's for sure, I think he's evil as hell. And I could see him totally doing something like this. Anyway, on to detail number seven, the blue mushrooms. Now we see one snip of this in the kingdom area, but I'm willing to make the theory that this has something to do with Juvenium. As we know, the different chapters go deeper and deeper into the facility, and it's believable that things are going to be man-made deeper in the facility, you know, like the kingdom. But seeing something as organic as a mushroom doesn't fully align with that. We also know that the root of Juvenium comes from deeper inside the facility as well. Could this clearly organic substance have something to do with the root cause of creating Juvenium? And it's pretty clear that the king and the queen of this kingdom have a lot of power in this world. Could it be that their power is sourced from them having the natural resource right there? It also might explain why there's random mutants down there. They could be gobbling all of this pure Juvenium right up and turning into these freak shows. And that blue hue is very Juvenium like. Anyway, on to detail number eight. There's more to the Jester than meets the eye. Now, this isn't a new thing, but the Euphoric Bros also like to add secrets within their thumbnails. And the first thing that I noticed was that in the thumbnail behind Sheriff Toadster, the Jester is mighty wide. I highly doubt they did this for no reason. I think the Jester has some powers that we haven't fully seen yet, like the ability to split in half and maybe turn into two beings. One being the happy side and one being the sad side. It could be just a graphic design choice, but they usually do these things for a reason. It could be why the Jester is such a formidable force. Maybe he can split in two and take on mascots together. But don't worry, in the next chapter we'll murk his ass. Unless there's more secrets to him and he has more powers, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Anyway, on to detail number nine. Queen Bouncelia is in the thumbnail. Now, I didn't find this out via any editing tricks or anything like that. There's nothing hiding in the black darkness of the background. That's just clearly her tail. I easily dismissed it when I first looked at it. The color was too similar to the blue of the Jester, so I just thought it might be one of his long fingers or tail. And then I thought it might be a blue stinger flint tentacle because of the size. I mean, we've seen tentacles on the thumbnails in the past, and they've been true to the scale. So then I looked a little bit deeper, and I noticed that the color was actually slightly different to the Jester, and more similar to a certain Queen Bouncelia. That's actually her kangaroo tail. And I feel like it also reinforced forces another theory that I had that she's huge. But I've got more to say about Queen Bouncelli in this next detail. Detail number 10, she's working with the Jester. The final clip within the trailer shows us a room within the kingdom. We can tell it's the kingdom because of the brick that I mentioned before. And just in the distance, you can see a gate with a lit up area behind it, which looks like the outside of the kingdom. And then we see the throne with Queen Bouncelli's ears and tail showing her true scale. I didn't mean to rhyme, but it's clear that there's a massive corridor between the outside and the inside. And then I started thinking, this is exactly how it was in the medieval evil ages. The king or queen would sit on their throne, and then the peasants would come to bring offerings to beg or ask for forgiveness. But there's another thing that would happen in this scenario. A jester would come and entertain the royalty. Uh-oh, it's all coming together. The jester works for the queen, and because of this, all of his efforts are to entertain her. We even see this mysterious message on a whiteboard saying nothing is funny enough, probably referring to the person that matters the most in the kingdom, the queen. As the jester continuously fails, his efforts might get more and more drastic, along with his potential offerings, like for example, offering up the mascots from the upper levels. And that could be why they're imprisoned. They're offerings. But I could be completely wrong and I totally accept that. And I've got a secret 11th detail. And it has nothing to do with the Garden of Banban. Your boy Aero has taken the leap. A bit of a life update, but I finally quit my day job. I'm now a full-time content creator. And it's all thanks to you guys. I appreciate your support so much. And that juicy content is going to continue coming your way now. So make sure to subscribe to my second channel, Erosa, where I do all my big brain playthroughs. Twitter and Instagram will help as well. Oh, and I definitely didn't forget, when I hit a million on Eroga, I'm gonna do a big face reveal. Goodbye.